lesson six and seven. Lesson six and seven, we're going to talk about a couple of different things here. Well, first off, we're going to talk about subtracting real numbers. Okay, subtraction is something we struggle with a little bit more than addition. Uh, two numbers with the same absolute value but different signs are called op opposites. So somebody give me a number. Two. Okay, what's the opposite of two? Negative two. They have the same absolute value but different signs. So those two numbers are opposites. Another name for opposite of a number is its additive inverse. Because if I take two plus negative two, what do I get? Zero. So it's the number I would add to a number to get zero. Okay, does that make sense so far? So opposites or additive inverses are the same things. Is everybody with me so far? I don't have any problems. I can move on. Great. Inverse property of addition. Okay, so we're dealing with some properties for every real number. For instance, a, a plus negative a, or negative a plus a. In either case, that equals zero. So if we plug in two for a, two plus negative two equals the same thing as negative two plus two. In either additional case, I get zero as an answer, correct? Okay, and I, is two the only number I can work with? No? Okay, good. All right, so you've got five plus negative five equals zero, or how could I rewrite that, change it up a little bit? Negative 5 plus 5 equals 0. So addition and subtraction are inverse operations. They undo each other. Subtracting numbers the same as adding the inverse of the number. Okay? So 5 minus 5 is the same thing as 5 plus negative 5. They're the same thing. Rules for subtracting real numbers. Okay, so to subtract a number add its inverse, then follow the rules for adding real numbers. So if I have 3 minus 5, that's the same as 3 plus negative 5. Okay, it's the other, you know, it's basically what we just looked at in our last slide here. Okay, it gets me to the same thing. So if I go back, okay, addition and subtraction, inverse operations, subtracting numbers the same as adding the inverse. Okay, and we're just seeing that here. Subtracting a number is the same as adding its inverse. So no, no new information there. Okay? So that's all lesson six. Now we come to lesson seven. Uh, it talks about simplifying and comparing expressions with symbols of inclusion. Symbols of inclusion are things like parentheses. So a mathematical expression can include numbers. We can have variables. We can have operations. Uh, symbols of inclusion. Symbols of inclusion are like fraction bars. Uh, absolute value symbols, right? These are these are what we would call grouping symbols. Not all grouping symbols are simply parentheses, but parentheses are there. Braces, brackets indicate which numbers, variables, and operations are parts of the same term. So that parentheses set is going to keep that as one single term. So um, in our example here, 2x over 3 uh, plus 3 to the 1 fifth equals, uh, sorry, uh, closed set minus 2y. This expression indicates that the parentheses is considered a single term. This example up here only has two terms. Okay, Term 1, which is what's inside the parentheses, and term 2, Okay, because terms are separated by addition or subtraction, separated by that subtracting of the 2y. Okay, Two terms there. So that has uh, inside a single term, so to simplify an expression with multiple symbols of inclusion, you begin inside the innermost symbol of inclusion, and we work our way outward. That's order of operations, right? Grouping symbols, then exponents, then multiplication, division, then addition, subtraction from left to right. So it's important, notice that it says here again, order of operations, follow that at all times, even when working inside symbols of inclusion. So a, even there, Okay, I've got to follow order of operations inside because I might get uh, multiple sets inside my parentheses. Okay, that's it. So let's look at some questions that we can answer. Okay, we've got this. You guys have this document, right? We can pull this up and I'll look at it together. All right, we want to find the difference. What does difference mean? Subtract. We have 26 minus 32. Okay. Um, Positive and negative, right? How could I rewrite this? 
32 minus 26? Is that what somebody said? Is 32 minus 26 the same thing as 26 minus 32? It's not if it's money, right? Okay, what did you say, Tiffany? 26 plus negative 32. Yeah, we can look at it like that. And if we look at it like that, what we see now is the addition of different terms, right? Or different, oh, what do I want to call it? The addition with different signs, okay? Which is a question that we ran into in our homework last time, right? So what would I want to do here? Without plugging it in my calculator, what can I do? Thirty-two minus twenty-six, and my answer is going to be what symbol? A negative. Why? Because the thirty-two has the larger what? Absolute value. All right. So I've got uh, two minus six. What do I need to do? Borrow from the three. Put a two up there, right? Put a one over there. What's twelve minus six? Six. Two minus two is zero. My answer is. Negative six, right? Okay. All right, let's do another one. Okay, we have negative one minus negative 14. Uh, what happens when I have double negatives? Becomes addition, right? So we have negative one plus 14, right? So I have opposite signs. Which one has the larger absolute value? 14, so what am I writing? 14 what? 14 minus 1, what's 14 minus 1? 13. Okay, that was a little bit easier, right? Okay. Alright, find the difference. We've got, um, I think for the most part, um, you guys kind of get a little bit of a handle on some of this. But what you'll notice is that there's like 23 questions through this sheet. You, we don't have to do all of them. But I'm going to give you a minute here to look through that list and see if there's a question that you don't think that you could solve on your own. Okay, because I could end up solving a lot of questions that you could just as easily do yourself. I want to solve questions that you don't think that you could answer on your own. You guys think you could do number three okay? You guys are so quiet. What about number four? Five? We've got some absolute value signs there. How do we feel about that? Caden, you think number five is one that we'd want to do? Sorry, I didn't mean to point you out. Okay, let's look at number five. Okay, we've got the absolute value of negative 5 plus 9. That's the same as 9 minus 5, isn't it? Okay, what's 9 minus 5? 4, right? What's the absolute value of 4? Four? 4, okay? Over here, we have 4 minus 9, right? Well, that would be 9 minus 4, knowing that it's going to be negative, right? What's 9 minus 4? 5. But my answer is going to be negative, right? It's going to be negative 5 inside the absolute value sign. What is the absolute value of negative 5? 5, okay? But I still have 4 minus 5, correct? Okay, what's 4 minus 5? Negative 1. You guys can do that much on your own, all right? You feel a little bit more comfortable with that? Okay, all right. Um, I'm going to tell you something. I want you to write this down because you guys can... Pull up your homework assignment. You're going to see that it's Lesson 6A through G, Lesson 7A through 20, right? Okay. Now, let's see. A couple of things with that is that tomorrow, tomorrow is, I'm, I'm going to do this for you because it's a big assignment. Tomorrow is going to be a work day, okay, which means I'm going to give you time to work uh, on your homework in class, okay, and I'll walk around and help. Uh, if you get done all right, or you go home tonight and you do all of it. Right. What should you come in tomorrow ready to do? Try Excel stuff done, right? Okay, but I want you to add one more question to the list. 
Okay, in fact, I want you to add this question as the last question that you'll answer on every single homework assignment for the rest of the year. How is this used in real life? Where do people use this? Right? What's that? I, okay, but what kinds of jobs use this? What, what scenarios use this? No, and I don't want to hear like they use this in construction. I mean, how, give me, give me a real world problem. Cashiers. Cashiers, that's great. All right, uh, people that work with money, uh, a teller at a bank, right? Somebody who is a loan officer, you know, because there you're dealing with debt, correct? And loans and people owing money, right? Seeing how negative numbers work. We're also looking at, you know, greater than, less than stuff in here. We're looking at fractions. I want two sentences, minimum, two sentence minimum of how this, what you've learned between lesson six and seven, okay? Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, both lessons. It doesn't have to be four sentences, okay? But I want two sentences at least. It could be six sentences for all I care, but I want two sentence minimum of explain to me how this can be used. And the reason that I, I ask this is because I get asked all the time, what do you think the most common question asked of a math teacher? Yeah, where am I ever going to use this? Okay, I want you to answer that question. You've got the internet, you've got Google, you've got all that kind of stuff that's out there. You can YouTube and see, how is this used? All right? I want you guys to actually have an interest and seeing how this stuff gets used in the real world so that you can see for yourselves. It's not just hearing it from me that yes, this will be used, but actually going out there and looking and seeing where it's used. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, all right. Uh, let's try to cover another question. Make sure that you write that down now, otherwise you're gonna do the A through G, A through 20, and then forget to do that question. Okay, um, what about number seven? Do we wanna see number seven? Yes? Okay. No? Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm looking at number seven here. Uh, it says compare the expressions, if possible, use greater than, less than, or equal to. I'm trying to look and see where they actually want you to put it in at, though, because it looks, looks like, I, th I think that they actually want it here where this dot is, although what would we naturally assume that dot means? We would assume that that means multiplication. So um, I know what the answer is supposed to be, but let's see if it actually comes out that way. All right, so let's look at the left-hand side first. What should I do first according to order of operations? Parentheses inside the, parent inside the brackets, right? So seven minus six is what? One, all right, so we know that that's one. What comes next in that? Oh, what's that? One plus one. What's one plus one? Two. What's next? Exponent. So I'm taking that two and I'm doing what with it? Two times two. Two times itself, right? What's two times two? Okay, four. What's nine plus four? Thirteen. So we got thirteen on the left-hand side, right? Thirteen. All right, let's see what we get over on the other side. Okay, what's the first thing I want to do? 10 minus 8, right? 10 minus 8 is 2. What comes next? Mm, square it, right? Exponents next. So 2 times 2 is 4. Now what's next? I know that I'm not, I should probably be writing all this down. 4, okay, so we've got 4 here after we've squared it. So now it's 3 times 4. 3 times 4 is what? 12, so now we've got 12. 12 minus 9 is 3, okay? And 3 plus 6, 9, okay? So we've got 13 and 9. Um, what do I want to have? A, greater than, okay? 13 is greater than 9, and that was the answer. So we were correct in assuming that that dot right there was not multiplication, but it was where they wanted to have their inequality symbol at. Okay, uh, let's see, what about 8? How are we on fractions? So you want to see 14? What other?
other questions that we have? Do you want to see eight? No? Yes? What's that? What are the boxes? Um, I'm guessing that's just, oh, that's where it's messed up. Those should be negative symbols. Apologize. If you, and that's a good question to ask if you ever see something where it doesn't match on your sheet what's up here. Something's gone wrong. All right, so we've got negative two-thirds minus negative one-sixth. What am I actually going to end up doing? Um, negative two-thirds plus one-sixth. Is that right? Because I'm subtracting. All right, so now I have negative two-thirds plus one-sixth. Um, which one of those has the bigger absolute value? Two-thirds. All right, so really what I'm doing is two-thirds what? Two-thirds what? I'm adding terms with different signs, right? So, I mean, this is where I'd say go back to lesson five. Look at that little deal. It says adding numbers with different signs. What's the rules? Two-thirds is what to negative two-thirds? It should be the, it's the absolute value, right? So I'm finding the absolute, absolute value, correct? All right, so the absolute value of negative two-thirds is two-thirds. I'm trying to add one-sixth to negative two-thirds. What's next? Page 23. So two-thirds what? Minus what? Minus one-sixth. Did somebody say that and I just didn't hear them? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so two-thirds minus one-sixth. What do I have to have in order to add or subtract fractions? Common denominator. What would the common denominator here be? Six. What do I have to do to two-thirds in order to get a six there? Multiply by two on the top and the bottom, right? So I get four-sixths minus one-sixth, right? So what am I going to get? Three-sixths. Does that reduce? One-half. What uh, what should my answer be? Is it positive or negative? Negative, because my one with the absolute value, so I should get negative one half. Okay? Should get A for an answer. Okay? What about down here? Anything down here? We feel pretty good about this. Feel good enough to go? You sure? All right, you guys did really good on the last assignment. I want to see it just as good on this one. Okay, I'll hit stop right here and you guys can get to work.